That's it. I quit. I'm done. I'm not telling you any more of what to do to pass. I'm going to tell you how to fail your check ride. I know exactly how to fail. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. Blah, blah, blah. Every single video. Hey, I'm cutting with helicopter ground school. Here's how you pass. Your I'm doing something different from here on out. Remember, we're helping you to fail because a lot of people don't care. They just want to fly the helicopter and see fancy navigation lights and blades spinning. Do not look at this book, Helicopter Flying Handbook. Do not look at it because look, 2019. Oh, that's outdated. It's outdated version anyways. I would not look at this. Do not. I mean, it's the Bible. It's the helicopter Bibles. You better not open that book. You better not be familiar with the chapters inside and the information in there. Do not, I repeat, do not use the PTS, practical test standards. Don't look at it. If you've already bought a copy, just leave it. Don't even take it to the check ride. I would not open it again. Who cares? It'll soon be called the air and certification standards, but who cares? I wouldn't look at it. Whatever you do, do not look at the PTS. <laughs> okay, I'm just teasing. I'm not going to throw that because if I want to look something up important to flying helicopters, I want my book. I don't want you reading one. Don't download a free copy from the FAA. Especially don't buy your own copy. Do not look at this book. To fly another day. Helicopterground.com. Do not show up an hour early. Be an hour and a half late. That's the way you do it. Have the examiner all frustrated and mad. He probably done went home, but then hell, that way you don't even have to take the stupid check ride. So whatever you do, man, I'd slough off. I wouldn't look at any of that stuff I've mentioned already. I wouldn't look at any of it. I'd not be on time, man. I'd leave late, go out, drink some beer at night ahead of time, and just, hell, just stay up all night. Don't get any sleep at all. Screw up and still show up late. So what I want to do if I wanted to fail again, logbook smog book. Who keeps good records? Screw it! Why would you want to spend all that money and time and effort to write it down in this stupid little book? What, what's that mean? Important time, important things. Fly, jump in the helicopter and go fly them cross countries. And all that night and all the stuff you got to do. I mean, if you want to fail, I mean, don't go through the time and open up the far aim and go in there and put little cool check marks like I have in here. Little cool check marks beside. Do not double check that step. Number one, don't fill it out correctly in the first place. And just, if you do make entries, just, eh, hell. If it's a two hour cross country, I say fly 1.5. Who cares? Logbook, schmog book. That's what I say. Speaking of that logbook, endorsements, who cares? If your instructor's like half-assed, you know, just have him jot in whatever. I mean, who cares, right? I don't know why you would care. I mean, you know, it's, it could only stop the check rights. So you never even get started, but that's kind of what you want to do anyway, right? If you're not preparing correctly and using the PTS and the far aim and the helicopter flying handbook, and you're not going to show up on time and you don't have the endorsements aren't right, or I mean, your requirements aren't right, right by the far aim, why in the hell would you have an endorsement and a signature correct? I wouldn't even sign the pages. Like the one, like I got <laughs> examiner through logbook at me one day, my student the night before, I'm like, hey, you're, not all your logbook pages are signed. Do that tonight. Oh, okay. Examiner comes into the office that day and goes, to another, I'm, I'm demonstrating. This is what he did. He walked in. So your student decides not to sign his logbook, huh? Did you know he did that? You fill him out. I would definitely not take heed of our HOGS members here on the wall. The pastor private commercial CFI. Don't use hogs. Don't listen to these people. They spent money. They studied hard. They were excited and happy when they got their rating and they were done. You don't want to be happy, right? Because you're miserable. That's why you don't really want to study and you don't really want to open up the books that you're supposed to. So whatever you do, don't pay any attention to the hogs wall of fame and how hard any of these people work to get through their pass, pass their check ride. That's 273, did you say other? 267. But we have over a thousand email testimonials, testimonials in 10 years, but don't pay attention to them because they don't know what they're talking about. I can always speed that up if I need to, right? That would seem dangerous. Okay, then I have my best three tips of the way to screw up your check ride, okay? My three best tips. Number one, don't go around. Whatever you do, do not go around. Execute every maneuver, however you set it up, fly that thing down. I don't care if you're sloppy, the setup's crap, fly that approach on in. Yeah, don't go around whatever you do. Do not go around. That is a super, probably my best one for how you can fail. I've had three failures in my 21 years of teaching, over 100 check rides, I've had three people fail, ever, that's it. That's probably, that's one of the top three. So don't go around, do not call it off. Set it up sloppy, fly it down, who cares? Because you're going to fail anyway, so there you go. That's number one. So. <laughs> okay, number two. You're going to get two for number two. Because the first one I thought of is why this student's failed, but there's a tidbit that's an extra. It's a bonus for this one. So this is the numbers two, eight, right? So this is where the examiner says, hey, I want you to shoot a straight in auto to the numbers 
0.28. So you know that you want to flare pretty close to those numbers, a little bit before, maybe just a hair after, but you want to be pretty close to this spot. Doesn't have to be dead on, but you want to be close. And with the proper preparation and judgment, you can get pretty close to that spot. So this, let's say, I don't know how to do this measure wise, but let's say this is your, you're landing on 2.8 and you know, and you, and you come down and you land about here and flare and come out and you go a couple feet past or whatever, or you go past just a little bit, not really a big deal, but this guy, he lands like, that's 2.8, here's the runway. He lands like way over here, something like that. Missed the spot, failure, he had to go in. Prior to that, he was a fixed wing pilot, very sharp individual. And during the ground school, he said, I'm reviewing VFR stuff. He's a rated pilot. And he's like, ah, ah. Kenny, I just did my flight review for the fixed wing. I'm good on all that VFR stuff. You don't, you don't have to ask me all that stuff. All right. I'm like, well, you still got to know it. Ah, I'm good. Well, guess what? During the oral portion, before he got to the flight, examiner pulled me out and said, hey, this guy's not doing well. He can't really hardly read a METAR. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. After the words, and this student's still a friend of mine. He called me a few weeks after he'd never felt anything in his life. And he was like, Kenny, next time you do an add-on pilot, make sure you go over VFR stuff with them. I'm like, yeah, I told you. And you wanted to tell me, oh, you just done a flight review and how you didn't need to review VFR stuff. Well, I'm just telling you, make sure you go over this, which is what I was trying to tell him in the first place, which is what I'm trying to tell all of you. So all this stuff. So there's your failure right there. There's how you do it. If you're an add-on, Ah, you know it all already. You got VFR down, no big deal. And who cares about the spot? <sighs> Two, eight, one, four, the grass, the field next door. Hell, who cares? I wouldn't even worry about it. That's how you fail. Okay, set. <sighs> the belching, burping flight instructor. <clears throat> and my third one was my first, my first failure as a CFI was my first student as a CFI. And my student was a state trooper, had his act together, and he was an airplane CFI. Sharp individual. He said, read this. I don't want you reading anything. If I said, read this, he'd read it. Do this, do that. He always came back from one lesson to the next lesson and would do whatever I gave him to do, right? So he was really sharp. But I was a brand new CFI too. So he goes to his check right, flies a couple hours away because the local examiner's not available. Goes in, he's good, he's smart, he's got all this stuff down, he knows emergencies, he knows it all. The examiner says, okay, go ahead and here's some numbers I want you. Do the math and I want to know what is the pressure altitude at this airport with this given situation scenario? He couldn't do it. He couldn't remember how to figure pressure altitude by hand. There's lots of fancy gadgets and ways to do it, but this examiner wanted him to do it by hand. He couldn't do it and he failed the check ride. He had to get, he got sent home because he couldn't figure pressure altitude. The examiner I've used for 20 years, he always goes, hey, and he'll jot down the numbers with a student. He'll go, he write it in, he puts down the numbers, and then he'll push the paper over the applicant and go, okay, Go ahead and figure that up and give me your pressure altitude from those numbers right there. But I want you to do the math. I'll go get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Figuring it by hand. So we push that inside helicopter on ground school and we've always, I've always made every single student do that. Why? Because the first guy failed. So if you want to fail, whatever you do, do not know how to do pressure altitude and don't know. I definitely wouldn't learn by hand. Don't do it. Don't learn by hand. <sighs> what else, Heather? Don't, don't, don't do any of this stuff. Don't buy hogs. Don't, buy hogs. don't use any of those books. Who cares? Who cares? Nobody cares. Let's add a little bit of, let's add a little bit to this. Because I promised the other chapters. Let's hit a couple. When in cruise flight, the helicopter suddenly yaws right and cannot be corrected by applying that left pedal. What is the likely problem and what do you do? What I say? Keep flying, who cares? You, out, you wanna fly for fun anyway, right? Cause you spend your time on Facebook and Instagram and all these cool social media sites and you like all the pretty helicopter pictures and fancy stuff and you wanna know all the cool stuff, but you don't really wanna know the hard stuff. I have some advice for you. You know, there's a lot of YouTube, you know, videos out there and there's courses out there that say, Private pilot the easy way. Easy way to pass, whatever. Go to that channel because pff, there's no work to this. You don't need to know nothing. I just keep flying. I just, I just keep flying the helicopter. Hypoxia. Man, it comes along with the feeling of euphoria. The examiner in aeromedical factors might say, what are the corrective actions for hypoxia? <laughs> this is a great buzz, man. This is fun. I feel good. You don't have a care in the world. Why would you want to correct it? 
Helicopter, smell helicopter, emergencies. The helicopter ain't gonna break. Nothing's gonna happen. You ain't gonna ever fly that high to get high epoxy anyway. You only fly 300 feet above the ground anyway, so who cares? What RPM will the low rotor RPM horn come on in your helicopter? Don't look for the answer in the POH. And I would tell the examiner, or examiner? I'd tell the examiner, Kenny's high on hypoxia and he don't care. Rope, uh, rotor RPM horn, RPM schmorn. To fly another day. Who cares? That's how you fell the check right. I quit. I'm not telling you how to do it anymore, especially the PTS. I'm so sick of the PTS and the far aim and the helicopter flying handbook, hogs videos and these videos, blah, blah, blah. You might have your own notebook. You might be taking notes all this time, putting some things together. I wouldn't study any of it. CFI check, right? I did pass, but I took it with Tim Tucker. I like telling the story because, you know, I like to brag. I did my CFI with Tim Tucker. It was a super difficult check ride. And when I was messing up, I was teaching from my notebook and he was looking for a term and a lesson plan in here. And he, I couldn't come up with the term. And he's like, he reached over and grabbed my notebook and he turned a page and I heard the huff and puff and he went this table isn't very big so this is this mini version he literally does this and I talked to him at Heli Expo and he denied he ever did this and I laughed and said yes you did he threw the table across the table at me go sliding across the table and he's like why don't you why don't you look inside your own lesson plan your own notebook don't 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 take any notes or if you got notes forget about them I'd get rid of them Last but not least, aircraft log books. I've already talked about in this series. I'm going to say it again. Here's what you want to hear from the examiner when you're sitting there across the table. To know you're on the right track to fail. To know that there's no way. Here's what you want to have the examiner do multiple times until he says it's over. <sighs> if you hear that, you're on your way to fail on that check ride. I quit. I'm not telling you about any more of those. I'm not telling you to look at any of them because I don't know what else to say. That's how you fell. If you want to do it and you want to do it upright, you want to fill with confidence because it's easy. Anybody, monkeys can fly helicopters. Piece of cake. You don't even know nothing. Do not, I repeat, do not use the far aim manual. Don't look at that thing. Don't download one from the, from the app store. Don't get a hard copy. Do not open it up. Don't use a study guide that's in there in the beginning that tells you what chapters you should study. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> that far aim, let that thing be on the table the day, the check ride, or not. Don't even take one. Ah, hell, don't even take it. Piss on it, leave it at home. Stop. Peace out.